This week's Ion MPI is Broadcom. Yes. Lady Ada, what is this week's Ion MPI? Well, interesting because, you know, I don't, we haven't actually covered a Broadcom product, so I'm very happy that we're, we're finally doing it. Broadcom, you know, you, you see their logo and, you, of course, you hear from them. They, they make Wi-Fi chips and, of course, they make the Raspberry Pi chip and, and, and many other uh, popular things. Your chance of your router, your computer has Broadcom uh, wireless communications devices. But they also um, make other stuff, and I think... Uh, I think they merged with another company, and they, they have Opto Electronics as well. Um, so this week, we're actually going to be talking about UV LEDs. So uh, this product is, I want to get the part number correct. It's the AUV3-SQ32-0RT0K. It's a 35, uh, 3.5 by 3.5 uh, millimeter UV LED with a nice lens. These are really luxurious UV LEDs. Um, uh, their surface mount, um, they're extremely powerful. Uh, I think they do up to like 300, sorry, 700 milliamps uh, current through them if you heat sink them properly. Um, used for a lot of purposes, um, but you know, one of the cool things is that, um, you know, you can buy low cost UV LEDs, but these are really, really nice ones. Um, and they are a great replacement for uh, CCFL bulbs, as we'll talk about. So UV LEDs, as you can expect, um, Maybe you remember from grade school or high school, there's the visible spectrum that, you know, uh, from violet up to so red, you know, violet from the bottom and, and red to the top here. Um, the longer wavelength is red and the shorter wavelength is violet. And then you see the rainbow. And then, you know, beyond that is the infrared, um, lower power, lower, uh, wider wavelength and UV, uh, you know, higher power, shorter wavelength that goes above. And you see the UV spectrum is actually quite large. Um, so that's something to watch for. UV is, it's not like when we say red or yellow or green or violet, we're, we're talking about a very small sliver of the visual, visible spectrum. We're talking about UV, it's actually like a, a full range. It's quite wide. So um, one of the things we'll talk about is the, the nanometer wavelength and how you want to uh, keep track of that. Um, you know, the, the UV wavelength, oh, do you mind? Uh, you want to uh, see it Yeah, because I'm going to read the text. Thank you so much. Um, so UV is uh, divided up into um, subsections, uh, UVA, UVB, UVC. Um, there are different ones that are used for, you know, like you see UVC is germicidal. Um, and uh, there are some that are better, different wavelengths are different are better for different purposes, uh, which we found out when we were actually researching for, uh, you know, at the beginning of the, the COVID pandemic, people were using UV to sterilize surfaces, but we were also looking at like, what does it take to cure um, epoxies? And you actually can't mix and match them. You do have to really have the, the frequency tuned, which is one of the cool things about um, the uh, Broadcom LEDs is you can get them in different bins. Traditionally, what people use are, um, and historically, you probably remember the black light bulbs. Watch out, black light bulbs are actually different than UV bulbs. Um, these, I think, are, I think, black light bulbs. They have a purple effect and they make, you know, white things glow and, and they make things fluoresce. But they're not necessarily good for curing or uh, germicidal or medical uses. So, uh, you know, still a lot of people have used... Um, fluorescent bulbs to create UV lamps, uh, sorry, UV lamps in, in the fluorescent format to um, create that wavelength of light. You can see um, on DigiKey, they actually carry small bulbs um, that, uh, you know, you have to drive with the ballast and they're not really easy to use. Um, but this is historically how you would get um, UV light. And you still see this, you know, I see disinfecting bulbs or if you go into a, uh, um, a, uh, a restaurant, you'll see, you know, there's a uh, you know, bug zapper or, or uh, sterilizing lamps are often still UV fluorescence. But if you're an electrical engineer and you want to add a UV LED for curing properties or, or germicidal properties or, or, you know, whatever purpose, these UV bulbs are, um, they're delicate. They break easily because they're glass. And so, especially something portable, um, they're large. You have to have a lot of circuitry to support them. You have to protect them. And of course, the light is going in every which direction, so they're not focused. Um, and for a lot of curing, proper, uh, curing purposes, you want to make sure that you're only emitting UV light on the thing that you need to, because UV light, you don't want it to go into people's eyes, and you don't necessarily even want to have it on people's skin for a very long time. Um, and so that's one of the things about these, uh, you know, UV bulbs is um, they, you know, sometimes they have a wide spectrum, sometimes they're a narrow one, but they definitely have a, a wide um, uh, physical 
um, you know, the the light is spreading physically throughout a wide space and you have to have a reflector to reflect the back of the bulb out. Something you don't have to deal with, with uh, you don't have to deal with when you're using UV LEDs. So, uh, you know, UV LEDs are quite popular. You have seen, we did projects with them. Uh, here's a project um, where uh, we made a, you know, if you get your manicure done and use gel, um, you're probably familiar with these LED bulb um, or sometimes fluorescent bulb um, curing devices. You put your hand underneath it and it cures the shellac very quickly and it's very hard. Um, UV, it was reading about it, it's actually one of the few lights, it's, it's like kind of the last light frequency that can affect chemical bonds, which is why uh, you see it so much. Recently, we actually used it with uh, UV resin to make keycaps because we we're doing a lot of keycap projects. Um, UV curing for resin is amazing. It's, it's extremely fast. The resin, uh, as long as it's clear and the light can get all the way through, um, you can cure in a couple seconds or a minute, um, and it's very strong uh, and uh, you know, turns this liquid into a solid almost instantly. And then historically, you know, I was actually thinking about when was the first time I used a UV lamp if you're doing photolithography, um, making silk screens, or in this case I was making a PCB, as you see in the beginning of this ancient tutorial now, um, 15 plus years old, I was using a, a 15 watt UV uh, fluorescent bulb. Of course, now I would use a, a UV LED lamp instead because I would get much better focused light. Um, and um, a lot of this is, is possible because of the, you know, the five millimeter UV bulb that we've been, you know, using a lot of, and we, ha we have these in the store. The thing about these bulbs, though, is they're not binned. Um, you know, when you get them, you, you know, they kind of have a, a rating, but often that rating isn't specific. You don't really know what you're getting and you don't necessarily want to get, you don't want to test each one to make sure that it's emitting in, in that frequency you need. Because again, depending on whether you're doing curing or medical, you're going to have different um, wavelengths that you need. So the nice thing about these uh, Broadcom UV LEDs is they're fully binned. Like when you buy them, you are going to get the frequency you want and they're available in uh, three different bins, 365, 385, and 395. Um, and then, you know, there's a selector guide. You also have different viewing angles and, and you know, there's specifications. So, you know, if, if you're making a real product, use these. Do not use those through-hole LEDs. Those through-hole LEDs are great for, you know, if you're making uh, gel, manicure, curing devices, and that's fine because it doesn't matter. But, um, you know, if you're, if you're using these UV LEDs for a, a proper purpose in a, in a device, um, I would really recommend getting binned LEDs. I tell people that they're more expensive, but you know what you're going to get, uh, and they're reliable. Um, there's also uh, radiant flux bins and forward voltage bins and color bins. And, and if you're doing optoelectronics, you know you're familiar with this. You can get even more specific about uh, getting exactly the wavelength you want, so you have uh, the highest efficiency possible. So the good news is these are in stock. Yeah, well, there was 997 when I took the screenshot. Yes, there could be less. Happen. So these come in tape and reel. Um, you'll probably want to use a heat synced aluminum PCB with these. They do get quite hot. Um, we don't have a video, but I do have a demo. Want to do a live demo? Yeah, I can do a live demo. Okay. So, um, I'm hoping, hold on, let me show, let me show my. Okay, so here is my UV LED, and as, as you can see here, it's quite, it's quite bright. I have it just uh, soldered onto a, uh, two wires. And uh, you can see another nice thing about these compared to uh, CCFL or even a five millimeter is how precise the, the point is. And it's very even. Um, so I've got some UV resin here. I was using this to do keycap stuff. And you can see I did a couple tests earlier. Okay, so you're gonna... But you put a little bit of here and it's liquid. Okay, okay. yeah, so you can, it's liquid. We agree. And then uh, you shine a UV LED on top. You can see the, the liquid, liquid, okay. Shine the UV LED. Yeah. Be entertaining for a few minutes, maybe. I don't know. Well, do, 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 so do, do, do. someone looked it up. Uh, yeah. D Disney did have something to do with Ghost in the Shell. Yeah. And then I m made up my own quote because someone said distribution yeah. is not ownership. And I said, but distribution is ownership. It's 99% and nine tenths of the law. According to Dune, which yeah. they never said in Dune, but I'm just going to make it up now. Okay, so let's see. It's only been a couple seconds, but you'll, um, you'll actually be able to feel it's warm when it's cured because there's a it's a exothermic okay and then uh when you touch it it's no longer oh, liquid now it's solid it's solid so that's how fast it cures very very effective so now this is a, a solid chunk of of hardened yeah. resin and yeah it's, it's a little bit warm okay uh because of that but um 
Yeah, this is super cool and really fast. So I remember we put this under a fluorescent bulb uh, when we were curing um, keycaps, and it took, you know, like 15 minutes. Yeah. This is like That's 20 instant. seconds. Yeah, yeah it's, it's extremely powerful. Do be careful with these. I mean, they, they look white, uh, but uh, they're definitely uh, fluorescing. You can also see. Oh, maybe you can't really see. But yeah, I mean, I can see. It's a fluorescing, fluorescing color. Oh, cool. My, my fingernail looks cool. Anyways, uh, so these UV LEDs. Uh, they're super nifty, and uh, they're picking place of also very easy and very small. So uh, good for your product design. Okay, and that is this week's INMPI. Hi, INMPI.